Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the daily press briefing by the Syrian coalition uh, today, the 5th of December uh, 2013. Uh, let me start by talking about the statements by the French ambassador to the United Nations around the Geneva conference, uh, where he mentioned that if I were uh, in, in, in the shoes of the Syrian opposition, I would not attend Geneva too. Uh, the French ambassador said that Assad mentioned from the get-go that he will not respect the conclusion and the results of uh, the Geneva conference and that he rejects the idea of a transitional governing body. Uh, the position of the coalition uh, around Geneva II has been very clear. However, there is a lot of confusion that, are, that is caused by the statements issued uh, by uh, the heads of the Assad regime. These are contradictory statements. And at the same time, the regime continues to use the 13th largest army in the world to kill innocent civilians in Syria. Just uh, in the last seven days, Assad went back to using Scud missiles, missiles against innocent civilians in uh, the Raqqa province. He continues to use his airplanes, he's attacking Deir Atiyah continuously for the last uh, 72 uh, hours. Uh, we believe that a political solution is the ideal solution to stop the bloodshed that's taking place in Syria and also to free Syrians from the tyranny and dictatorship of the Assad regime and we will continue fighting the Assad regime as long as he continues his lies and his deceit and um, all the tricks that he is using to stop Syrian people from achieving a, true, uh, a truly democratic country. It is incum it's incumbent on the international community to apply a tremendous amount of pressure on the Assad regime and the allies of the Assad regime for him to show his seriousness uh, in going to Geneva and forming a transitional governing body with full executive powers, including uh, security and an army, uh, creating a transitional governing body uh, that has also full legislative powers and all in accordance with the Geneva communique principles. Um, it is very clear to us that the statements coming out uh, by the heads of the regime, whether it's Bashar al-Assad, uh, Walid Mu'allim, uh, Zabi, all these statements uh, show that they are completely disconnected from the reality. They're completely disconnected from uh, Syrian people and the demands of the Syrian people who reject any role for Assad in the transitional period or in a future Syria. The Assad regime had said very clearly that they will go to Geneva. However, they also said very clearly that they reject all the six principles of the Geneva communique. That makes us wonder whether the Geneva conference is going to be successful or not. Uh, the Syrian coalition uh, is preparing for all uh, scenarios and we are coordinating at all different levels with partners whether inside of Syria and outside of Syria. Um, another, another item that we have over here is the statements that came out from the CPWC in terms of waiting for one of the countries uh, to accept, uh, to, to allow uh, the use of one of its ports to, uh, to accept chemical weapons before they are transferred to a U.S. ship where they will be uh, destroyed. Um, we've always praised the international effort to destroy the chemical weapons. Uh, these chemical weapons were used against innocent civilians in more than 14 different occasions. The last one was the August 21st, 2013, where the Assad regime used these chemical weapons against innocent civilians who were sleeping, killing over 1,400 people. Uh, we know that the international community uh, have actually agreed on the ban of chemical weapons early on in the 20th century because uh, the international community understood the grave danger that these chemical weapons cause. Now we want to remind everybody that the Assad regime not only used chemical weapons which killed about 2,000 Syrians but have used conventional weapons whether knives, burning alive, torturing until death, using uh, explosive barrels, uh, using ballistic missiles, using Scud missiles, using his air force to kill over 130,000 Syrians. Uh, Syrian people do not want chemical weapons on their, on their land, especially that the, these chemical weapons are being controlled by a criminal, mi a criminal mind such as Assad's. Uh, in terms of what's taking place in Qalamun, uh, the uh, Assad regime forces continue uh, to gather in Deir Shirobim, uh, which is a historical uh, area. 
uh, it's uh, in the city of Ma'lula. They continue to attack uh, some of the historical sites in the city. Uh, and that, all, that takes place after uh, Free Syrian Army units controlled the city and after uh, the Free Syrian uh, Army units managed to capture large numbers of the Shabiha of the Assad regime uh, soldiers in the last 24 hours. FSA brigades on the ground are working on protecting civilians, they are working on protecting uh, houses of worship, uh, whether they're Muslim or Christian, we are doing the best that we can, we're protecting them with all the power that we have. Uh, some of our uh, fighters uh, were injured as they were attempting to get some of the residents of that city out, uh, they were injured as they were trying to secure some of the houses of worship. Uh, the Syrian coalition continues to coordinate, fully coordinates with the leadership of the uh, Supreme Military Council of the Free Syrian Army. The situation with the 12 nuns, uh, reports show us that there are actually five nuns that have disappeared. Uh, we, are continually, we are continuously monitoring the situation. We believe that they are in a secure location and that they will appear in the next uh, few hours. Uh, there's currently uh, very, uh, there, there's an increasing uh, increase in fighting that is taking place in Nebek. Uh, the FSA units managed to push back uh, the attempts by the Assad regime to control the city. Uh, at the same time, the Assad regime forces continue to bom uh, bombard the city of Deir Atiyah. Uh, over 8,000 uh, Syrian refugees had had to leave the city, running away from the aerial bombardment by the Assad regime. Uh, of those, there's at least 1,000 children, 1,000 children. All of these uh, refugees had had to go into, into Lebanon. Uh, last uh, couple of last points in terms of the advancements of the Free Syrian Army. Uh, the Free Syrian Army Brigades and Units were able to control the supply lines between Liwa 80, the Division 80, and uh, the area of transportation in Aleppo. Uh, this is a very significant advancement for the FSA in the last 24 hours. Uh, the FSA managed to uh, destroy uh, many vehicles and kill several soldiers of the Assad regime. Um, in the eastern countryside of Hama, the FSA managed to destroy the Syria Tel uh, checkpoint, which is one of the large checkpoints uh, controlled by hundreds of the Assad regime soldiers. Uh, this is a checkpoint that has been uh, was a continuous nightmare for uh, for the innocent civilians who live in that area. Um, lastly, uh, the FSA managed to destroy over 18 different uh, mechanical units, uh, BMB units, uh, different, uh, different tanks for the Assad regime in the last 24 hours. Uh, we, uh, we continue uh, the activities of the volunteer week that uh, we continue the activities of the volunteer week uh, which was launched by the Syrian coalition under the title Syrians Give and Connect. This is a campaign that is running both inside of Syria, in Kafrimbal, in Aleppo, in Deir Zor, in the countryside of Damascus, in Ghouta and Daraya. Uh, this is also a campaign that's being run in Turkey, in several cities in Turkey, in Lebanon, in Jordan, in Egypt, and in North America. Thank you.